Bob McCann. He is UBS America's incoming chairman. And Tom Naratel, he is UBS America's incoming president. This is a Fox Business exclusive. And it is good to see you, Bob. And Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Morning, Mary. Morning, so before we get to sort of the impact of, of what we're seeing out there, let me let me get to your news. And Bob, you're stepping down as president of Wealth Management and the Americas, becoming chairman of the Americas uh, at the end of the year. Tom, you're taking over uh, as president of uh, the Americas and, uh, beginning on January 1st. So congratulations to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Why make this change right now, Bob? Well, I think Sergio Armati, our group CEO, wanted to make changes at this time of the year to get the team in place that's going to lead the business next year. As far as my own personal situation, I started talking to Sergio in the middle of the year about wanting to make some changes in my life, have a little bit more time, and be able to stay with the company and focus on the things that I enjoy. And I'll be spending a lot of time with clients in particular. I have a background in uh, the markets as well as wealth management, so I'm very comfortable talking to CEOs, CIOs, as well as wealthy individuals, and, and that's what I'm going to spend my time focusing on. You've been overseeing a division that really has been one of the jewels for UBS, but Tom, you're coming in, taking over at a time that investor flows have slowed down. Uh, we've got all of these sort of macro events in the world. Uh, do, do your priorities differ? from what Bob has been putting in place. No, Maria, actually I was, I was Bob's CFO six years ago when he came in, so we worked on the strategy together. And the team's been executing over the last six years right in line with what we laid out. And I think as you look out over, over the course of, let's say, the next five or six years, if the first five was about how we make a billion in this business, the next five is about how we make the second billion. Wow. So, so what are you seeing in terms of investor flows right now? Uh, are you surprised that markets do not react to the terrorist events that we've been talking about so much, for example? You have, you have a combination of both uh, the geopolitical events, but also concern about uh, monetary policy, both uh, the Fed and also the ECB moving and really in, in two diametrically opposed positions. And that puts clients in a position where they're concerned and they want to wait and watch. And I think you're seeing that in, uh, in the current level of flows. Because in the most recent quarter, the investment bank did very well, but investor flows slowed down, Bob. They slowed down a bit in the last quarter. But to go back to your question, I'm actually not surprised at the way clients are reacting to the, the markets. Again, perhaps it's my early background in the business, but I do believe in the collective wisdom of the markets. And as horrific as the events in Paris were last week, um, and for all of us, if you live in New York or Boston and D.C., it immediately takes you back when you had that horrific event in your city. I think the markets understand very well and made the conclusion, came to the conclusion that that wasn't going to have permanent economic effect. And because of that, you get this muted reaction. I think actually more troubling than the attacks in Paris and, and even the plane coming down overnight is the lockdown in Brussels. That is the kind of thing that slows economic growth. That is the kind of thing that investors will look to over the intermediate and longer term. This is a really good point, because when you have a lockdown like you have in Brussels, people just freeze and they don't do anything. So what kind of a 2016 are you expecting, Tom? You know, 2016, the first thing that um, the clients are going to have to react to and the market's going to have to react to is, you know, the Fed, will they or won't they, clearly it seems to be leaning in the direction that they will, unless there's some surprise from a geopolitical standpoint that, uh, that changes that. So I think that adjustment to a, a gradual process of tightening is going to be the market story for 2016. And, and how do you address that? I mean, do you need to make changes in your own allocating of capital, in your own running of the business, if in fact the Fed does raise next month? You know, we've been for quite some time pre-positioning ourselves for the eventual change in uh, monetary policy for the Fed. And if you actually look at Wealth Management Americas in particular uh, and UBS Group as a whole, we benefit substantially from, from rising short-term interest rates in the U.S. So you almost, you almost want rates to go higher? Higher rates uh, in a gradual way would actually be good for our business. And with respect to clients, our chief investment office, we expect the move in December. We expect the rate increase in the United States to be more gradual than it's been historically. 
We expect uh, easing rates in Japan and Europe. And we still favor risk assets, and we like European Eurozone equities, Japan equities in particular right now. You know, so you still like Europe and Japan, yes. uh, even though those economies are, well, I mean, Japan's still in recession, I guess, yes. and Europe is, is, is quite slow. Let me, let, let me get your take on, on uh, something else, and that is really what you're seeing in terms of investor flows right now, and the fact that UBS is a large bank with a lot of capital, we know that, but yesterday we heard from the Federal Reserve, Dan Tarullo, basically say the major banks have to raise capital are you guys are you going to need to raise more capital so if, if we look the uh, Swiss regime is definitely the toughest in the world and the the new too big to fail legislation uh, that's been negotiated in Switzerland that was announced a few weeks ago puts uh, Switzerland with the highest capital requirements uh, in the world so for us you know work on the on the C car which was uh, which was Tarullo's uh, specific point that he was bringing out for us we believe we're well prepared for that uh, with the Swiss regime so so generally speaking for for Wall Street you know you guys are looking at bonuses right now looking at 2016 what do you want to tell employees uh, today given the fact that people are worried that we're gonna see more job cuts are you done with the cutting oh. Go ahead, Tommy. Oh, sure. No, I think if you, I think if you look at uh, 2015 and 16, as I said, I think the environmental backdrop one is one that's more favorable for our industry. We still have a bit more to go in, in terms of our overall program on effectiveness and efficiency globally. But we're investing in our growth areas of uh, both the Americas and Asia Pacific. And here in the United States, we're hiring financial advisors. We're still looking to bring talent into the organization. We're going to have about 7,000 financial advisors, and we want to have 7,000 great financial advisors. We think we have a lot already, but we're always interested in adding more talent to the organization, people who have client relationships, and in particular, uh, financial advisors who can serve the high net worth and ultra high net worth client. That's really what we're focused on, and we've really changed our business over the last six years. You know, in 2009, when Tom and I started working together, we got 32% of our invested assets at UBS from clients who had less than a million dollars with our firm. Today, 83% of our invested assets come from clients who have a million dollars or more with our firm, and 39% comes from people who have 10 million or more. Mm. So talented men and women that are financial advisors that can handle those kind of clients, there's a place for them in our firm. That's a really, that's a really important point. Uh, thanks for making it. And, and those, those investors risk adverse right now or the sitting on cash? Yes. Uh, across our clients that we poll, they have about 20% in cash. That's a big number. Yes, it is. Bye.